Hi everybody, welcome back to Crandall Reviews. I'm Matthew Crandall. Today taking a look at Annabelle Creation, the latest movie in the Conjuring universe. This will be a spoiler-free review. If anything is in the trailers though, I may mention it because I don't consider the marketing material spoilers. Although truth be told, I watched the latest Annabelle Creation trailer after I saw the movie and was flat out shocked at how much they gave away in the trailer. Uh, so I'm going to hopefully not ruin anything for you. Um, going into this, I was not psyched. I was not psyched because I absolutely love The Conjuring and The Conjuring 2. I thought they were two of the best horror movies of the last 10 years. They use every tool of a horror movie to just be a fun house of scares. Annabelle in 2014 was a piece of garbage for me. I only liked the elevator sequence and a few moments here or there, but director John R. Leonetti, who did one of my least favorite movies ever, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, just brought nothing to the project. There was no style. It felt so familiar and cliche and plotting that I didn't like it. So I wasn't excited for Annabelle Creation, especially because last year, Lights Out, produced by James Wan and directed by David F. Sandberg, who did Annabelle Creation, left me kind of cold. I thought it had style to burn and a couple creepy things, but the characters were bad and I did not like the plotting at all and thought it was just okay. So I was surprised and pleasantly surprised when Annabelle Creation is freaking awesome. This movie is scary, it's stylish as hell, and it actually has interesting characters that you care about, and it doesn't rely on just cheap jump scares. Yes, there are some cool jump scares in here, but oftentimes they subvert expectations or they're shot in such a stylish way that you just can't help but revel in the fun of these jump scares. And another cool thing is that this is a stylish as hell movie. Every creepy set piece escalates and builds the tension and pushes it up till everybody in the theater is just freaking out. There's lots of creepy cool imagery in this. And the main reason that it works is that mostly this isn't just a haunted doll picture. It's much more of a haunted house and it's got that horror fun house, we're just going to throw everything in the kitchen sink at you vibe that James Wan did so well in the first two Conjurings, that this really fits in with those movies, and I had an absolute blast. David F. Sandberg has created something so stylish and so creepy and fun that I was floored. I uh, really respect the guy's work now. Like I said, I didn't necessarily love Lights Out. I can't wait to see what he does next especially if he's joining the DCEU with Shazam. But uh, this movie is just creepy. So we see, it's called Annabelle Creation. So we meet this family, the Mullinses, and Anthony LaPaglia is the dad who's a doll maker. He makes Annabelle the creepiest doll you've ever seen. Um, and shortly thereafter, his daughter is taken away from him tragically. We jump ahead 12 years. They have now offered up their home to be a pseudo-orphanage so a nun and a couple of kids go to their house to stay there until the kids can be adopted. Um, and of course, once we get there, they establish this house, and it's creepy as hell. It's got a stair lift like Mrs. Deagle's house in Gremlins. It's got secret passages under the stairs, and you just know that all this stuff, a dumbwaiter, uh, you know all this stuff is going to come back in the creepiest of ways, and it truly does. Uh, every time they just escalate the tension more and more, we get tons of creepy imagery with a well, um, a scarecrow, and even they make light bulbs themselves scary. So there's lots of cool moments, and it's all because of this demonic presence, and they do not shy away from showing this demonic presence, and that was fun and a surprise. Annabelle herself is still creepy and just randomly moves around and shows up places, but the demon that is attached to Annabelle is terrifying, and I loved what they did. This thing is just a masterclass in tension, but we also get some nice character moments. The two lead girls, Janice and Linda, are best friends, and their dynamic was really engaging. My only negatives of the movie is that the first little bit, uh, it took a while to get going. I like that we meet the characters, and I think that it's great that we take time with them. But in those moments, I actually thought the style and the camera work was overkill. Um, so there's a shot where Anthony LaPaglia and Miranda Otto and their kid are just coming out of a church, and the camera flies over the church and comes down and watches them come out and go to their car. 
And I was like, okay, like you're showing off a little bit too much here. Um, but then it sort of settles down. And once the scares start, then we need that style to help elevate it and make it more interesting. So I thought the beginning, it was, it was a tad pretentious and a little bit too somber. But once it starts to go full on demonic, uh, demonic presence and the scares start to go, boy, oh boy, are you going to have a fun time at the theater with this if you love horror? People were freaking out in the theater. There is a couple really good, gruesome jump moments that had me out of my chair. And it's just eerie and lots of the imagery stays with you. And they play with stuff that you can't see and what you can see. And even expectation where you know that something is going to happen, but you're not quite sure when. And they've really perfected the execution to get you when you least expect it. Or if you do expect it, they turn it on its head somehow and really freak you out. There are lots of moments in Annabelle creation where tension is created in darkness through the use of the soundtrack. And the sound design in this is a monster. There's lots of cool, creepy sound effects that engulf you. And they really crank it up to 11 when it needs to. And then other times they pull back. But the sounds alone can be so creepy and so unsettling that you're kind of on the edge of your seat. And the sound design overall in this movie was fantastic. One of the other things... I didn't quite dig, unfortunately, is that they do try and tie this into 2014's Annabelle by the end. And I thought it was kind of unnecessary because up to that point, this movie completely stood on its own and was great. Um, and then they tie it in. And at first I was like, oh, that's fine. That's kind of cool. But when you think about it, and especially if you were to rewatch Annabelle 2014, which I unfortunately did and it still sucks... Um, such a coincidence has to take place for that movie to take place after this one. Like a cosmically impossible coincidence that I wish that this had just ended and we could infer where Annabelle 2014 took place after this rather than actually having this lead right into it the way it does. So a couple minor nitpicks, but overall... One of the most pleasant surprises of the summer. There is a five second stinger at the very end of all the credits if you want to stay. It's slight. It tees up the next movie in the series. So it was kind of cool. And there are a few nods to the other Conjuring movies in this. And of course, the Raggedy Ann doll makes an appearance, which was the basis of the real Annabelle. Not this horribly creepy white dress thing that James Wan has created but she is lovable and creepy in her own right. August has nothing really coming out, so you've got to go check out Annabelle Creation if you like horror movies, especially if you like The Conjuring movies and didn't like Annabelle 2014. Go and see Annabelle Creation. It is so much better. I'm so happy, and I'm now really enthusiastic about these other Conjuring spin-offs while we wait for The Warrens to return in Conjuring 3. So hit the comments. Let me know if you're going to see Annabelle Creation. If you liked Annabelle. What's your favorite scene in the Conjuring movies? What, what really sets you off? What's scary? Or do you think they're overrated? Hit the comments and let me know your thoughts on the whole Conjuring universe. And thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it.